Okay, this sermon is entitled, Lord Shippers, Works, Trusters, and Roys Make God Look Stupid. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 72 reads, Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness, and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. Now, when it comes to false prophets, there's basically one category of these devils, and that is a lordshipper. The teaching is called lordship salvation. A more apropos designation would be lordship damnation. And works, trusters, and roys are just subcategories of lordship. And believe it or not, there are people out there that have the paw to claim they're not a lordshipper when they absolutely are. Now, what does it take to be a lordshipper or a works, truster, or a roys? It takes rejecting easy believism. That's all it is. They're basically trusting in their self to either be saved, to stay saved, or to prove they're saved. And these people, in turn, are making God look absolutely stupid. They have lowered the standard. And they're actually teaching that God will accept you if you try your best. And you may still have lustful thoughts. You may cheat on your taxes. You may have secret sins. You may have foolish thoughts. But you're good to go, or you're copacetic, if you've repented of some of your sins. Now, nobody in their right mind would ever admit to repenting of all their sins. So these people are basically teaching that you just have to repent of some of your sins. And see, these false prophets out there, they hate my preaching because, number one, I reveal how stupid they are and how stupid their doctrine is and how stupid they make God look. Turn over to Matthew chapter 5. When it comes to God, he doesn't accept mediocrity. He doesn't accept anything less than perfection, impeccability. And in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus is dealing with the religious Pharisees, and it reads in verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, nobody in their right mind would actually believe that they could become perfect. The point is, is that nobody is perfect. And that's why we need grace and that's why Jesus Christ perfects us when he died on the cross. And that's why he gives us God's imputed righteousness. So whenever you deal with a lordshipper or a works truster or a Roy's boy, Roy's means repent of your sins, you're dealing with somebody that has dropped the standard so low so they can think that they're good enough. And it won't fly. God won't accept it. The only thing God accepts is his righteousness. So the bottom line is, is the stupid God, lowercase g, of these unsaved lordshippers, foolish works trusters, and demonic roys preachers, is not the God of the Bible. And that's why in Romans chapter 4, it tells us how to get his righteousness. Let's take a look at verse 11, and it reads, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Now, when it says they're not circumcised, what that means is that you can receive God's righteousness without any kind of law or without any kind of works. The unsaved devils out there, these lordshippers and roys and these works trusters, they think that you have to attain righteousness by what you do. And that would be man's righteousness, but to get into heaven you need his righteousness, which is by faith alone in Christ alone. So watch out for these devils. All they're doing is making God look stupid because they're stupid. Because they're stupid. Because they're stupid. Because they're stupid. And because they're unsaved, and because they've concocted a God that doesn't even exist. And that God demands a change or some type of behavioral overhaul. And that's not going to save anyone. Because the only thing that saves us is the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away all our sins. And that's the true God of the Bible. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer.
Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Larry Lord. Larry! <laughs> I'm going to hell for Halloween. <laughs> Isn't that frightening, buddy? Yeah. Thank you, and we are. Oh. <laughs> anyway, bye bye.